Praise the Lord God's people. You are welcome this afternoon once again to another uh, edition uh, of um, Let's Break It Down with Pastor Dele Matthews. Yes, we have been considering uh, the title which I called um, The Realities of the Kingdom Age. And under that uh, title, we are on episode six right now. Um, we have been looking at certain salient issues and matters that are going to come forth you know in the kingdom age now yesterday i was sharing very briefly and i mentioned issues related to eden you know and all of that but i'm going to make uh, uh make mention of it again today uh, one of the things that we're going to be seeing as the kingdom age comes is that believers are going to be receiving a redefinition of issues a redefinition of terms a redefinitions of uh, redefinition rather of what we thought we had known now let me come again and stress certain things that i've stressed that i've mentioned at certain times before now <clears throat> there is the evangelical move and the evangelical operation in god's house the, the house of god is a very big one you see the kingdom of god is not that which is only in heaven it comprises both heaven and earth and have, particularly we are in a season uh, in and time whereby heaven and earth are going to be mixed together they're going to be joined together there will be no dichotomies there will be no divisions now there is the evangelical church the evangelical church is a church that stands upon the truth of salvation by faith that is about all uh the first and the last that they have known about the, the purpose of god and the counsel of god now the evangelical church has also learned to define the truth of scripture along the line of salvation by faith true and true um and that's from the beginning of our journey in christ until the end the evangelical church has learned to define uh, to define it based on the revelation that is given to that church and it is valid but <clears throat> it is not accurate to define um all the Christ, the entire Christian experience from the beginning to the end based on salvation by faith. Otherwise, we'll be missing out on a lot of things. Now, I also pointed out that the evangelical church is the church of the outer courts. Um, you know, and the evangelical church also is a church that, that uh, whose major truth is predicated on the truth relating to Passover. Passover, you know, is the first feast of the month of Aviv, and um, it comprises... Uh, 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 three feasts actually the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread and the feast of first fruits now all of the initial work of grace uh, which we have received in Christ is contained in those three feasts now <clears throat> so that and it is a church of the spirit that is of the salvation of the spirit so our spirits are saved at Passover when we come to Christ when we confess faith in Christ that is the evangelical church and the evangelical church started way back uh, at the time of Luther. Now, at that time, um, the first revelation in the modern era, uh, all pervasive revelation, not that other people have not gotten revelation of salvation by faith even before that time. You know, there was a Middle Age, there was a Dark Age, whereby the church eventually, the Roman Catholic Church eventually grew, uh, you know, to become very large. And then you, we know all the corruption that came to the, to the church and how the truth of the gospel was almost faced out. So Martin Luther, the Catholic monk, got a revelation of the just shall live by faith. And um, the, the, the evangelical church began in earnest. Now, we, we also have what we call the Pentecostal church. The Pentecostal church is a church that is predicated on the truth of the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And then they believe, and then the in one case, uh, they, they also, strat, they, they also uh, um, experience uh, just like the evangelicals anyway, they experienced the inworking of the Spirit. Even the evangelical church, even if they were not filled with the Spirit, but they had the Holy Ghost inside them. You can't be born again without the Holy Ghost inside you. You see, but we're talking about truths that were revealed part time in the body of Christ. So the Pentecostal churches, <clears throat> they, they, the, the, it began as a move, and like I've stated before, the fact that it began, it, began, it began rather like a move did not mean that there were no people that were baptized in the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues before that time. So what we see is that um, there was a move, a movement which started at uh, in about 1900 at the Bible School of Charles Fox Panham uh, in Topical Kansas. That move was brought to um, uh, Los Angeles at Azusa Street by one black man uh, uh, called W E W uh, E uh, Seymour, you know Seymour William Seymour uh, for short or in short. Now, so that man 
brought what became the catalyst, according to Robert Slayadon, became the catalyst of the sal of the truth of uh, Pentecost that we can receive the Holy Ghost afresh and, and um, we can have the acts of power demonstrated through us. And then, of course, it was the church of the holy place. It was the church also of the feast of Pentecost. Now, the truth, the truth about this church is that um, it was a church where the Holy Ghost began to work for the purpose of perfection. Yes, even for the evangelical church, the Holy Ghost was working in them for the purpose of perfection. But we're talking about emphasis now. So, why the evangelical church emphasized salvation by faith, the uh, Pentecostal churches, the churches that arose as a result of the revival, the, the, revelation, the revelation of the truth of Pentecost, baptism the Holy Ghost, and with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the, the, there was a revelation that was, or there were revelations that were released based on the release of those truths. God opened a new door. And then several churches started. And then the church of God moved past the evangelical into the Pentecostal. Hallelujah. And then, that is what we see, see to today. That's about over a hundred years ago that these churches have begun. And then you see acts of power, revelation uh, of the word was, the word was brought, broken down and all of that. And the people understood the word more because, you know, <coughs> it was Pentecost. Now, I said Pentecost answers to the holy place. Let's consider the holy place. Um, the holy place in the tabernacle of Moses um, had the 12 showbread. And then that, those are the gates through which we enter into the temple. It's actually, uh, at this time, the Lord began to as a mass movement began to release the truth of becoming the truth of becoming those who were born again in the evangelical church also had the truth of becoming god was you know god was releasing it to them but you see as a movement as something that became all pervasive this revelation was open to god's people at that time and they were able to say put a point on it oh god is revealing this to me the evangelicals also had the revelation of becoming like christ but um it may not be all pervasive like the Pentecostal, uh, the Pentecostal churches. Praise God. So, so what we see is a situation where um, uh, the Lord revealed more of His truth in the in the Pentecostal order, and then it it, it moved stronger and stronger uh, in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, um, then later we also talked. Uh, now, now another thing to stress is that the Pentecostal churches they began to define from the beginning to the end of their understanding of our life in Christ. They, they began to define it based on the revelation given unto them as a people. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, as a, as a movement rather. You know, they began to, it was only what God showed to them that they used to define scripture all true and true. So it will not, uh, so uh, uh, for the evangelical, you see that um, all scripture, all our experience ended either in heaven or in hell. You understand? That was the, that was the understanding. That was what they saw from scripture. And then in Pentecost, we say, they said, okay, look, let me, let me just quickly establish a little bit about the evangelical. The evangelical said, oh, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing by and all of that. So they defined scripture, uh, and the revelation of Christ based on the, uh, just struggling to live by here and then dying and then going to heaven. Everything was about dying, going to either heaven or hell and all that. And even for believers who are born again, they said, okay, these guys, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not living right, you're going to hell and all of that. You'll be eternally separated from God. That was what the scriptures, that was the movement. That was what the truth they understood by trying to define scripture based on the revelation that was pro uh, popularly revealed in their times. Uh, I'm sure that there was there are saints, even in those times, people like Jane Led, who actually saw, who saw behind that, who saw even, even what people have not seen even till now. There were people like Jacob Behrman, who saw beyond what people have, have ever even seen yet. You know, there are some truths that I will read to you from the books of those two people that you don't be wondering, what am I saying? What am I talking about? Now, those guys lived in the 17th century. That was about the time of the heat of the evangelical revival. There's a truth about God. Now, it doesn't matter what is popularly revealed in your time. If you seek God more, if you look into God more, and then you, saw, you, you want to enter into God more, God's going to give you access. 
God will give you access and show you things that were not even meant for your season and your time to come into. You remember Enoch, the servant from Adam, just seven generations from Adam. Enoch was already seen that the Lord was going to come with thousands of thousands of his saints to judge the world of the wicked. He was the first one to see the revelation of the, the day of the Lord, which a lot of Christians don't even know about at this time. Hallelujah. That was even way back before Moses, before Abraham. This man had known all of that. You could see David, and David pressed into God, and David was able to understand the structure of the tabernacle. What David did, we, all, we don't actually understand the, the measure of what David did. David, David, that's, that would be another story for another time. David reconstructed the, 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 uh, 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 the tabernacle. He put certain things there. What we call the Temple of Solomon had, had, it was actually uh, 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 drawn out, uh, modeled by David, and provided for by David. And there were major changes to what obtained in the tabernacle of Moses vis-a-vis uh, -vis what obtained in the temple of Solomon, which Moses designed. Hallelujah. Now, so, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of these uh, people who lived at this time uh, we, uh, just were able to define all the truth of Scripture based on what the people... Uh, the, on, on what revelation was given at the time of their involvement or initiation or startup. And they still continued like that till today. And those who go to those churches see everything in the light. Everything in scripture, they see it in the light. The evangelical see it in the light of heaven and hell. The Pentecostal see it in the light of, okay, we must have a good life here. We must experience the power of God. But they see it ended up in heaven and hell. Either we're going to go to heaven or hell. Then we they added the truth of rapture. We're going to go out and be raptured and go to heaven. All of them is still just about heaven, you know, and hell. We're going to have 1,000 1, year reign of Christ and after that we all go to heaven and all of that. That's what, those are the things they defined uh, uh, the, the Christian experience about. Because we must know this, that you see, we cannot hide away from, we cannot shy away from it and that is the fact that um, Christ has a beginning and Christ has a place that he's taking us to. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, until we come, until we all come. So there is a destination. There is, and Christ is that destination. Christ is the beginning. Christ is that destination also. Now the beginning is a measure of Christ, which Paul calls uh, uh, the earnest. That means the first deposit of the Spirit. Ephesians 1. He said we have received the first deposit, the earnest, the earnest of the Spirit. Now we're going to have the fullness. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 13 tells us that the ministry gifts have been given to us so that we come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, uh, at about this time, uh, about for about 30 years, 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years now, the Lord has begun another, uh, 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 brought in another wave of understanding and truth. Now, uh, in the way that uh, there's a party going on about where I am presently, so I hope it's not disturbing your hearing. It's not preventing you from hearing well. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, so uh, at about uh, 30, 40 years, it began to trickle in, trickle in, trickle in, and uh, it kept on trickling in, and we began to embrace the truth, and this is the truth of sonship, sonship, the kingdom of God, the fact of God's kingdom. Um, actually, if I would begin around the 1940s, about 1948, a revival started in Canada uh, around um, and, um, uh, around uh, uh, Saskatoon, a, a revival started around Saskatoon in Canada that was um, predicated on the truth of sonship. And around that time also, another revival was breaking forth in the United States, which was a revival of power, of uh, charismatic power, charismatic preaching and movement. So um, this, this revival that broke up in Canada, I mean that broke forth in Canada, was known as the Lateran Movement, the Lateran Revival. And at about 1948 also, the other revival broke, broke forth also in the United States of America. This revival broke forth and, um, uh, and, and it was represented mainly by uh, this, uh, 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 what you call the Healing Revival. And in the Healing Revival, you have uh, people like A.A. Allen, you have uh, uh, um, Gordon Lindsay, you have people like Jacko, you have people like uh, Rora Robert, you have people like Kennedy again, and all of these uh, people. And then they taught, and, but there was a, 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 strong, a, a strong release of the power and the ability of God. Now, they were the first trained uh, to, to go forth, and then eventually, you have also uh, the, 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 this other lateral that was so silent. It was very silent. 
it was very silent and then it began to also bring uh, comfort now uh it, it, so it, the first one if we divide um, the, those two revivals uh, in, uh, as two arms so you have the left arm being the um uh, pentecost of uh, uh, charismatic uh, revival uh, you know and then the right arm being the sonship movement you know the sonship revival uh, uh, at that time now now the sonship revival was a little bit more silent they are the ones that started talking about the manifestation of the sons of god they are the ones that started talking about um uh, about uh, kingdom you know they were not the first ones you know this was what apostles believed you know what happened is that god began to reveal after the middle ages and the dark ages god began to reveal his purposes from one generation to the other so there was this generation where which after god has released pentecost afresh in our time in the modern era like i said let me repeat myself again yeah there were two of them one branched forth into uh what we call the charismatic movement you know they display the power of god and the ability of god uh, in signs and wonders evangelical i mean evangelism mass crusade and all of that and healings uh, revivals miracles unexplained uh, 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 situations turning around by the power of god that was one and it began in 1948 uh, it's also good to know that Israel also began as a nation in 1948. Okay, or well, I just hold that one now. And then in 1948, also there was a movement, there was a revival um, uh, uh, in Canada that started around Saskatoon in Canada. Um, and one of them that one, uh, I, I just trust God, I will remember um, uh, this man's name. Okay, maybe I will remember as I go on. Uh, I didn't um, know that I was going to be sharing along that line. I just started, you know, and God is leading us along these lines. So, so, so that revival began. Began, and then it was called the Lateral Movement. They had, they believed in the manifestation of the sons of God. You know, they believed that every believer is uh, going to have the power of God manifesting them. You know, Why the while the other revival that broke for in the united states um which was the healing revival um uh why it it's majored on the anointing this one majored on individual believers that all individual believers are going to have a revelation and an understanding of god and they were talking about perfection they are the ones that started talking about perfection and the revival also of the prophetic movement and the apostolic movement and that's that's the revival that started in canada and it was very sublime for a long time because the one that started in the u.s that branched off in the U.S. Uh, 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 um, was more popular, and we received it also in Nigeria much more popularly. In fact, and then the other one also came in, but in a very silent way. You have a man by the name of Pa S. G. Elton. He was heavily influenced by the revival that took place in uh, in Canada. And it was the first one of the first uh, books uh, um, pamphlet I read about the manifestation of the Son of God was pa, from Pa S. G. Elton. Pa Elton operated in Indonesia and operated also around the Middle Belt area. You know, it was a, it was a British uh, uh, missionary to Nigeria. He was a father to Archbishop Benson Idawosa. He was a father to. He also was around in the, at the revival of uh, Apostle. Ayo. Babalola. He was a great influencer at that time. He was, um, was a mighty man of God. He moved all through the campuses in those days, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s. He moved around Nigerian campuses, even, yeah, in the 80s. I think he died in 1987, thereabout, I think so. You know, so this man heavily influenced Christianity at that time. And he used to, he, he was talking more about the manifestation of the sons of God, that God was taking us to the measure, the start of the fullness of Christ. Now, but much as it happened in the world, where this former river i mean this first one that broke the healing revival that broke forth in the in the u.s uh, was the one to gain the greatest attention so also um even though pa elton came in but eventually the the one from america took uh, uh which was um, the what do you call it now the healing revival took over much more and we still have it right now in nigeria but um uh, in the worldwide christian arena um the revival uh, uh, from uh, from um, the, the Lateran revival from Canada uh, has begun to uh, show forth. Now, when I say we're from Canada or from US, I'm not trying to. I'm just using it as a descriptive thing because of where it started. It doesn't mean that Canada owns it, and it doesn't mean that the US owns another one. No, you could have started in Nigeria, you could have started in Oshogbo, Ife, you could have started in Kano. Uh, just that it started in those places. That's why we're mentioning all of those towns and uh, um, and the countries where they started from. Praise God. Now, so we have those survivors mounted. Now, just as much as uh, about 40 years uh, ago, God began to raise people along these lines again, showing them truths of scripture relating to sonship, um, uh, prophetic and apostolic movement, um, showing them about the conclusion 
of the age you know and all that because that's what the lottery mover also helped to define they defined uh, according to the revelation given unto them, um, the uh, the healing revival was much Pentecostal. The latter rain of revival was talking more about the finishing part of Christianity. Now, um, so just as much as the evangelical uh, Christians defined everything about our faith in the line of um, with revelation given to them, everything ended either in heaven or hell. The Pentecostals, you got to enjoy your life, you got to have money, you got to have power, you got to have that. Eventually you die, go to heaven or hell. Then the sonship people are revelation. Let me not say people. The revelation of God, the sonship. All of this is contained in scripture, not that it originated from these groups. Praise God. It was just that God opened the eyes of some people and they say, oh, we don't agree with you, so we're going to do this. This is what the Lord is revealing to us. Now, so right now, the Lord is revealing all over the world the truth that the Lateran revival started with. Hallelujah. And um, they kept, they were custodians of that truth for a very long time. And then the truth is breaking for all over the world right now. And this is the truth that has to do with the finishing point of our faith, that we're going to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that the creation is going to be experiencing the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, there have been saints who talked about this even before them. There are people like Jane Laird who talked about it. There are people like uh, Preston Abbey who talked. Okay, Preston Abbey was an offshoot of the of the uh, of the uh, Latin revival. People like Preston Abbey. There are people like um, Bill Britton who talked about this. You see, Greg Joyner talks about this even now. Uh, Francis Frangipane, um, Don Bever, and all of these men. And um, uh, uh, on our own side here we have apostle OLSA, we have pastor uh, we have a uh, pastor Tayo Ladejo, we have myself we have um, some other ministers that talk about the finishing point you know of christianity that where is god really taking us where will we get to and say hooray we got it now this is where we're going that is to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ now these revelations are going to be made more manifest to us now now, uh, I said all of that that I just said now in order to say this. Uh -huh. Now, yesterday I was sharing about, um, uh, I was sharing about, um, Eden and I was talking about the fact of Eden, um, being, uh, from, uh, being in the earth. Eden was a physical man. Eden was not a spirit. He was a spirit that has a soul that lived in a body. So he, he must have lived in a garden. Hallelujah. So, but you see that garden, whether it was physical or spiritual, that is not the thing that concerns us. It is the meaning of the garden that has to do with us. So when we get into the next episode, in about uh, the next two, three minutes, um, I will talk about, talk about that a little bit more. Praise God. Now, um, I will just change, uh, just so that we don't have too many uh, we don't have sp spent a lot of time doing one episode, so I, I decided to okay to cut it into briefs like this. So just stay, just hang on. I'll be back right now. God bless you.